Hello, welcome to another video by LSX Engines, Tuning, and Marine. In this video, I'm starting the rebuild of a uh, 4.3 liter Mercruiser V6 engine. This is the second series I've done, and uh, this is uh, this block is ready to uh, install the crankshaft, all the freeze plugs in, uh, oil gallery plugs. Uh, the last video I talked about the uh, relief valve that was in there, and then there's another uh, plug that goes in this hole here. But this block is ready to build, and uh, so at this time, I'm going to uh, start installing the crankshaft. And uh, as in a previous video, the part number, there, or what you do is you put in your bearing in these saddles here. These are called bearing saddles. This is your number four, number three, number two, number one. And you put bearing saddles in there, and um, or you put the upper, this is actually called the upper half because the engine's flipped upside down. But you put the upper half uh, bearings in there, and they have grooves in them. And those grooves have a hole that lines up with these holes. This is your main oil hole. This is your main oil uh, feeds for your bearings. There, 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 and there. So, about to put the bearings in. Uh, they are part number. Uh, this crankshaft was turned 1010, and so the part number is um, 5085M10. 5085M10, sealed power 5085M10. So we're about to put the bearing in, or bearings in, and then I'll uh, lay the crankshaft in. And you do not turn the crankshaft. The crankshaft uh, has to be checked for clearances with something called plastic gauge. So you don't oil the bearings and you don't turn the crankshaft this time. You just set it in there gently and, and do not turn it. So at this time, I'm going to put in a bearing shell. If I can get one out of the box. Uh, so this is the uh, this is the lower half. So I don't put that in yet. This yeah, this is the upper half. The upper half has the groove, and the holes the hole in the bearing has lined up with the hole in the saddle. So what I do is I set it in the uh, there's a tang there's a locating tang here. It's actually a locking tang. I put it in the other side first. And get it lined up right about there, and then push this side down in there. Okay, continuing on with the uh, bearing installing this 4.3 V6. There's nothing really wrong. I just had to use my palm to really press real hard right here and right here to get that bearing uh, bearing half to squeeze down in there. Uh, since this is the number four bearing, it's your thrust bearing. There's a thrust surface here and here, and these are the tightest fit because of these little uh, flanges here. They're the hardest to get in. So. I just said I used the meat of my palm right here and just push push down real hard right there and real hard right there until I got it feeling until it feels like it's flush with the surface right here. It's not going to be flush. There's a little bit sticking up. That's called uh, that's normal. It's called bearing crush. You want it to stick up because it when you put the two bearings together they tend to squeeze in a little bit and they deliver they do that on, on purpose to get it uh, to kind of seat the bearings in the hole. So. All right, moving on to the next three. I'm not going to video that. Again, I put in um, this side first, get that tang lined up, get the tang lined up, get the tang lined up, and then I press this side once the tang is, uh, once the bearing is going in with the tang lined up. To me, it's a lot easier to do that because that tang sort of locates the bearing lateral-wise, and you don't want to get this side started and then the tang not line up and have to pull it back out to it here. So it's a lot easier to start the tang first and then work this side in second. So I'm going to do that now, and uh, the next video will uh, show me uh, lowering the crank into these uh, bearing halves. Okay, continue with the uh, Mercruiser 4.3 liter V6 rebuild series two. I've now placed the crankshaft into the uh, upper main bearing halves, or bearing shells I call it, and uh, it's upside down, so those are actually the top half of the bearing. And I'll place it in here, and now I'm about to um, put the bearing caps on with the uh, uh, lower bearing shell in there. And uh, what you do is you put uh, a piece, you cut a piece of, it's called plastic gauge, uh, Clevite, uh, let me see if you can see the, the name of it. There you go, MPG-1 plastic gauge. And uh, you cut a piece, it's like a wax string and you cut it off the about the width of the bearing, about, you know, that wide or that wide, whatever. And you put the uh, bearing cap on with the uh, other half of the bearing on and tighten it down to the specifications. And then you undo it and you read your bearing clearance. And your bearing clearance you want somewhere. Um, actually, I'll read. I'll find out what the spec is and tell you what I uh, what the clearance is supposed to be when I put the uh, bearing caps on. But you plastic gauge uh, this bearing 
these are your main bearings. This is your number one, number two, number three, and number four. You plasticate each one of them individually and see what your clearance is. And if all your clearances are within tolerance, then you uh, oil up your main bearings, put your, carrot, put your bearings back on, talk, took them down one more time, and see if the crankshaft spins freely. And if it does, you're good to go to the next step. So that's what I'm about to do. Put the bearing caps on with the uh, bearings and check the clearance of plastic gauge. Continue with the 4.3 V6 Mercury Rebuild um, Series 2. Um, I just plastic gauged the uh, rear main bearing and uh, you can see the, the uh, crushed plastic gauge there. And using the gauge paper that comes with the uh, with the kit, um, it show I'm not going. I've already measured, so I'll just tell you what it says. It's between 0 0.002 and 0 0.003, closer to 0 0.003. It's just a tad wider than the 0 0.003 mark. So that means the clearance on this bearing is probably in the neighborhood of 0 0.0028 or 0 0.00. Um, what was the number? Um, it's closer to 0 0.003 than it is to 0 0.002. However, um, the, the factory recommended clearance is 0 0.0025 for service. But um, according to Clevelight, when you have a high performance engine, which this would be considered since the boats run at wide open throttle a lot of the time, um, you're allowed, you can add a half a thousandths to the factory measurement. So that puts me at three thousandths. So this falls under three thousandths. So I'm, I'm good with this measurement. So after doing the rear main, I'm about to do number three and number two and then number one. All the bearings are 0 0.0025 clearance plus half a thousand. So you're looking at 0 0.003 except for the front, which is 0 0.002, I think. Let me check. Um, actually, I'll find out later. But I think number one is uh, the clearance is like half a thousand smaller. So I'll double check that. But I'm about to plastic gauge the rest of the bearings and see how they turn out. If anything... If anything shows up other than the same as the rear, I'll uh, show it on video. All right, main bearing number three, the plastic gauge shows it is exactly 0 0.002. And it's uh, 0 0.002 full width of the uh, be uh, bearing, so. Number two is 0 0.002. I will check that against the spec for spec and call it out on the next video. All right, we're now on number two, main bearing. And again, it measures out to, let me see if I can get this in here. Point zero zero 0.002 clearance. Let me see if I can put there again. Zero zero 0.002 clearance. And it's the same, the rest of it stuck to the journal and it's all the same width. So the uh, the factory spec for two, three, and four is 0 .001, 0 0.0025. So this is well within tolerance, even when you add a thousand, uh, half a thousand of an inch. So number two checks out. So number one is a little narrow. It's 0 .008, 0 .0008 to 0 .002. So it's, it's a half a thousand smaller tolerance on number one which i'm about to do so that's four three and two about to do one and then uh, if it all checks out i'll be tightening uh, putting in the crankshaft and or oiling the crankshaft and tightening up the bearing caps once and for all number one bearing measures just a little bit over 0 0.002 so just a smidgen over 0 0.002. You had a half a thousandths for high high speed application, and you are within tolerance. 0 0.002 is the factory spec, and I'm just maybe just a smidgen over that, plus a 0 0.005. So 0 0.0005. So I'm I think I'm within spec with the added half a thousandths for high RPM operation. So I'm good with this one. That's number one. All right, so I'm now, I'm now plastic gauge all the bearings. I'm gonna remove the plastic gauge from there and from there, and then uh, all up these main bearings and torque them all down. And then once I'm done, I will uh, spin the crank to make sure it turns smoothly and the crankshaft. Wrapping up the installation of the crankshaft on this 4.3 V6, uh, Mercruiser V6. Um, the crank is now installed. All 
eight bolts, uh, all the uh, main bearing cap bolts are torqued to 77 foot pounds. Uh, according to the fact, the, the I'm using a Kohler 4.3 industrial engine uh, service manual to get my specifications from, and uh, all these bolts are torqued to 77 foot pounds. So it rotates. Uh, I'm, I'm using uh, Lucas Lucas uh, semi synthetic. Uh, Assembly lube and this stuff is super super sticky, and uh, so this crankshaft is not turning really free like you'd want it to. So anyway, you see it's turning. It's just a little bit uh, sluggish because this this uh, lubrication is really tacky, so it's hard. To, it's, I mean, it'll spin, but it doesn't want to keep on rolling. So, but I, I don't feel any uh, any kind of stoppage or anything in there by my hand so this is a success the crank is now in um by the way uh, the most important thing when putting an engine together is, is to keep it clean even though it may not look like my shop is that clean um before i install anything i clean i cleaned this crank right before i installed it uh washed it down with soap and water and uh dried it off with a uh, well, washed it down with soap and hot water and dried it off with the air compressor and got all the water off of it and then wiped it down with a rag after that and uh, immediately installed it. And um, every bearing shell I wiped clean on both the outside and the inside and the edges because the bearings, just because they come out of the box, doesn't necessarily mean they're clean. They can have manufacturing dust on them and so forth. So I cleaned the bearing shells. I cleaned the, uh, the main bearing caps. I wiped them down all over uh, with a clean rag uh, right before I put it together. So um, this crankshaft is now in. And the next stage will be... Uh, putting the pistons in from the from the uh, top side and that'll be a new phase of the video so thanks for watching